Is it live? Yeah. Hey, hello. I'm just um, saying hello, 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 everyone. And thank you for joining. So I'm just going to say welcome. Who's going to be first? Let's see who's going to join us. Oh, <laughs> welcome. Please help me share the video. Help me share the video because um, I'm going to play this song today. Hello, who are people joining? So, so you insist on doing what you want. This is a beautiful song. Help me share, help me share, help me share as you come on. Help me share, please. Help me share as you come on. Help me share. So we have a good evening, everyone. We have a song, it will be a short song by Dare. Pray for me just to wait for people to come on. So, um. Let's just wait two minutes for people to come on and we will start. Hello, Jedi Daya. Hello, Brother Donatus. You're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. As you join, you're welcome. Please share as you join. That's our tradition. Share, 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 invite people, share and invite. That's our tradition. As you join, click the share button. Invite somebody. Push it into messenger, uh, people's messengers. Invite people. Don't stay alone. You know, we are on the Help Gospel page. So, invite, invite, invite. And join. No. And you are. So the, today's topic is very, very important, I'm telling you, you need to join, you need to get people in to join us. We are going to start in a minute, invite other people, invite people. So I'm just waiting for more people to join, then we can start. So, invite people, share, share on the platform, share, share on the platform, invite others to join, and we are going to start in a minute. So, the song that played is Pray For Me by Dare, and I'm just going to end it, so we can start the business of the day. <laughs> the business of the day is more important than the song so we are going to start the business of the day and that is why I'm sharing my post right now to my page so join us it's very very important this topic I'm telling you who, what killed my forefathers should not kill me what killed my forefathers? What I've been born to? People are dying with the same thing. Should I die also with the same problem? Should I also die with the same problem? That is the topic for today. Why should I die with the same, with the, the same way my forefathers died? Why should I go that way? Why should I die the same way my forefathers died? And I'm just going to share this. So it's just a matter of sharing. If you are there, share, share, share. It's very important. Why should I? What killed my forefathers should not kill me. That's the topic for today. And I know you are sharing, so I believe that we are all on the same page yes, and we are sharing. Very so important. I'm just Why going to I? say this, um, sharing the, this messages so we can start. Why should I? Why should I die? Why should I die with the same thing that killed my forefathers? Why should it kill me? That is the topic today. And please invite as many people as you can. You will be glad you did. Because people are just dying in Africa. The way he's dead, he's dead. So that's it. He has died, he has died. So that's it. Everybody say, oh, she died, and that's it. So in short, we don't care. The person has died. That's it. 
they say he has died why did he die we don't know it's, the person has just died you know that's it and we don't really care why the person died or why the person didn't die so it's just <sighs> she has died that's it so today is not that same day we are going to be talking about what really what killed what are those things that we were we grew up to know that like this is what is happening and we think is right is in our head this is what is happening this is what has killed people so then we are growing up with it and it's also going to kill us if we don't do something about it that's what i'm going to be talking about today a lot of health issues a lot of health things that people were born into to know to think is right but it's not right and we are dying because of those things that is what i'm going to be talking about today and i really pray that as you join you invite people to join us because this topic is very very important i cannot stress it enough very important to invite people to join us as we start what killed my forefathers should not kill me what those things that kill my forefathers should not kill me and not in my house i'm in somewhere today so we just manage the lighting as it is what killed my forefathers should not kill me what are those things in your village? I was going to do a call-in. You can still call in. If you want to call in, call in through ID Charles, my messenger. Go to my messenger, call in through ID Charles. What are those things that we were born with? We were born to know that are killing people. They say people died from it. And there are things that we have also inherited. And if it happens to us, that means we are going to die with it. What are those things? That is what we are going to be talking about today. So, number one, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of things in our community. A lot of things in our society. A lot of things in Africa. Those things that we were born to inherit from our forefathers that are killing people that's what i'm going to be talking about that we've have inherited and it's in our head that these things are what is killing people this is what i'm going to be talking about today and there are least number of things i'm going to be talking about abiku what is abiku abiku is an Igbo word and it is called obanje in yoruba so we're going to be talking about abiku why do people that what do we hear of abiku these days Abiku, it was reincarnation. It was predestined to death. These children were predestined to death. These children were reincarnated. They said they used to die before the age of 12. So they were born and they would die before the age of 12. And we grew up to believe that there were Abiku children. They are Obanje children. So they were spirit of children that used to die before the age of 12. They called them Abiku or they called them Obanje in Yoruba. In the Igbo, they called them Abiku. Who were these children? They were children who parents of SS, SS got married or ASAS got married and they gave birth to sickle cell children. They gave birth to sickle cell children and these children, when they are born, they are sicklers and then they die before the age of 12. Those were sickle cell children who were born with sickle cell. And they die before the age of 12. But our African tradition, because we don't know things, we don't cannot explain, so that thing becomes spiritual. So we, we, we were told that these children were abikus, these children were obanje, and we have grown up to believe that they were obanje children. They subjected them to rituals, to spiritual things. But these children just needed help because they were sicklers. That is number one, very important in our community. We had children they call Obanje or they call them Abiku in Ibolan, Abiku or Obanje, which means children, dead children with dead spirits, children that were reincarnating, children that will come and, and suffer the parents and they will die before the age of 12. These were children that will return in the same way they were coming. So this woman was giving birth to children that were sickless and they were coming and they were dying the same way. Nobody asks questions, nobody wants to know why. What is sickle cell? Sickle cell is a genotype. Your genotype is AA, mine is AS, or yours is AS, mine is AS. We get married, we give birth to sickle cell children. I'll be talking sickle cell in a topic today. I'm just mentioning those things in our community that we grew up knowing that these things were 
as it is, we believe them. We believe that these children were Abiku. We believe that these children were Obanje. There was this other set of children who were born. They said they used to play with the spirits. They play around with spirits and they don't talk to people. They'll be nodding. When you come in, they behave. Those children were autistic children and they allowed them to die because we didn't know. That is number one I'm going to be talking about today. The second thing I will be talking about is epilepsy. Epilepsy, how many of us, you see somebody having a seizure and you run to go and help the person? How many? How many of us run to go and help somebody with epilepsy? How many of us run to go and help? They say the saliva of an epileptic person is contagious. The saliva of an epileptic person is contagious, so everybody runs away. So in our society, if you have epilepsy, you are an outcast. Nobody wants to touch you when you have a fit. That is why they fall into fire, they break their bones, they fall into all sorts of things. Everybody stay clear and they struggle on their own. These children, epilepsy is not contagious. Epilepsy is not contagious. We will not die the death of our forefathers. We have to get sense. Epilepsy is not contagious. Epilepsy is a brain disorder. When it comes like electrical ab abnormality, like if your hand is shocked by an electric wire, you know how your body will be shaking. That is how epilepsy comes. This brain disorder, these children have abnormality in the electrical disorder in the brain, so they have these seizures. It comes in different ways. There are some societies, they put them out. They are outcasts. They tie them to trees. There are some children that they don't send to school because other children will be running away. If they have a seizure in the class, the teacher runs away. Everybody runs away. The teacher runs away. The saliva of the epileptic child is not contagious. We will not die. We will not let our generation die the same way that our forefathers died. The saliva of an epileptic is not contagious. If you see somebody seizing, having a seizure, please go and help the person. Put the person in a, in a side position. Remove everything that can harm the person and make the person comfortable. That is number two. We need to educate our people that epilepsy, the saliva of the epileptic person, is not contagious. There is nothing wrong with the person. He has only got an abnormality in the brain. We have grown up with this mentality. Run away. Don't touch. Don't touch. And everybody leaves them to suffer. Everybody leaves them to die. Some of them have got lots of injuries. They break their bones. They, they, they fall into fire. We as new generation, we have gone to school. We need to start to talk to people and say, look, these things are not the way we were taught and not the way we grew up to know. These things are different. Number three, I want to talk about stroke. I want to give you an example. Mr. Obi owns a shop. She is a businessman. He's doing well. One day he has come home and as soon as he comes home, one side of his body is weak. He has a, 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 facial, a facial droop. The mouth drops. He cannot speak. Everybody around, the wife, the children, everybody is running around. They begin to pray. They begin to pray. They begin to pray. They begin to pray. The next thing they call the pastor. Mr. Obi is not talking. He is trying to talk. He cannot talk. One side of his body is They say he's a spirit. The spirits are after him. The same spirit that killed his father, they want to kill him. Bring him to the pastor. Bring him to the prayer house. That is a problem in the society that people don't recognize the stroke. The stroke is a facial droop. Your arm falls, your leg falls. There's weakness in one part of your body. The person will not be able to talk or the person will have slowed speech. It is not spirit. They say in my community, a, a spirit slapped the person. Please, I'll break here. I need you to put your contribution. I need you to put contributions here. What are those things in your community that are meat? They are not true so that we can get awareness. So Mr. B has a stroke. Mr. B has fallen. One side of his body is weak. He cannot speak. So the community thinks that it has been slapped by a ghost. 
The community thinks that Mr. B has been slapped by a ghost. The community thinks that Mr. B, the spirit that killed his father, is after him. So the wife is running from pillar to post. And they tell them in the prayer house, in the healing home, that look, because your business is doing well, the problem comes from your business partners. They are after you. They want to kill you. So the, the, the Mr. Obi is taken from one healing place to one healing center. Mr. Obi, the thing that Mr. Obi needs is to go to the hospital and get a brain scan. There is a lady whose mother had stroke. She went for a prayer meeting in church. And while they were praying, she became mute. Confused, completely confused. This is a true life story. She was confused. Ah, what is happening to you? What is happening to you? She couldn't talk. She was confused. She started seeing ghosts. She started seeing things. So they held her hand and took her home. And they took her to prayer. They prayed and prayed and prayed. They took her to a uh, to, to, to clinic. The doctor said it's not a, a hospital problem. Take her home. They took her home. And it was two weeks. And the doctor got Talk to me. I have a problem. Oh, my mother. Oh, they say it is colleague because they just promoted her. Colleagues are work after her. The colleagues they want to kill her. She's not talking anymore. I said, what happened? She said the mother went for a prayer meeting and became acutely confused. She cannot not know anything again. I said, have we scanned her head? No, the head has not been scanned. So the head has not been scanned. And you, what was done in the hospital? It is not a hospital problem. You see, our great-grandparents died of stroke. Our parents died of stroke. Should we also die of stroke? Stroke is preventable. If you have high blood pressure, you need to manage it. If you have diabetes, you need to manage it. If you're not taking your blood pressure medication, you are on high risk of having a stroke. There is no spirit after your life. This is not the spirit that killed your father or your forefather. It is your, the ignorance that killed your forefather is what is going to kill you. The ignorance that killed your forefather, the ignorance that killed your father is the same ignorance that is going to kill you. So you see the spirit, the spirit here is ignorance. The spirit here, if there is anything that is going to kill you, is ignorance. Ignorance is going to kill you. So you need to get knowledge. That is what the Bible says, that you get knowledge, get wisdom. If you have a relative, a family member who has some abnormality, is confused, slurred speech, one side of the body is weak, think stroke, facial droop, arms drifting, face speech, person is not talking, think stroke, the person needs hospital. The person needs hospital. Don't think spirit, don't think demons, think stroke. If you have High blood pressure. Think medication. Don't think somebody is after your life. Don't think somebody is after your, your destiny. It is my business partner. No. Think stroke. Now, we are going to move on to another one. A pregnant woman is pregnant. She's, she's pregnant. And every time she gives birth, her children dies. Every time she gives birth, her children dies. They say she's eating her children. They send her out of the house or the they, 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 they husband divorce her. But this woman has restless problem. She has a blood group and she has a restless negative. She, she, she has a restless post problem. Her restless factor, which is the protein that is on top of your blood group, is different from the baby she's carrying. So her body is fighting the baby. Her body is fighting the baby. When the baby is born, the baby begins to what? Bleed. Everything, the blood cells bleed and the baby can die because nobody knows what it is. Especially the women that go to healing homes to deliver their children. So what kill your mother is going to kill you because your mother used to go to traditional bed attendance. You have been born, you are going there because your mother has told you that that is where spirits will not come. So what kill your forefather, what kill your mothers, your great grandmothers is sure going to kill you. And that thing is ignorance. It is ignorance that kill them. It is ignorance that is going to kill you. It is ignorant that killed them. It is ignorant that is going to kill you. We are going into dog bites. 
Dog bite. There are some parts of Igbo land. I'll leave dog bite now. When they have a wound, that wound, they say, it cannot be treated in the hospital. The wound is a sacred uh, 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 cause from God. A lot of we people have died because of that wound. A lot of people, if, I'm, if you know this culture, write it here. A lot of people have died because of that wound. They say they have wound, that wound. They have to go to the village and do some sacrifice. Will you allow the thing that killed your, your mother to kill you? Will you allow the thing that killed your father to kill you when there is hospital? So this man I, I met, the wife actually sent me the pictures. He said, look at the wound in my husband's leg. We have gone to the to village from Lagos to treat this wound. We have been there. They've done the sacrifice, but the wound is still there. And I said, let me look. I look at the wound. It is infection. I said to the lady, she, he needs antibiotics. Your husband needs antibiotics. She said, no, this thing in Igbo land, it is sacred. It's a sacred thing. I said, do you want to die? Do you want him to die the same way others have died with this wound? She said, no, I don't want. I said, good. So you need, your husband needs antibiotics. This is an infection. The husband agreed, they went for antibiotics, and he took it for one week. The wound began to heal. The wound began to heal. The wound began to heal. You know, we have been born into this meat, falsehood, of different things. That is why we are pursuing things everywhere. Let us get our sound mind back. Let us look at things critically. This world is straightforward. God has made it for us to be straightforward. Let us look at things straightforward. You have a wound in your leg. Thank you, Sister Fola. And the wound is not healing. It could be you have diabetes. It could be your diabetes is a cause. The wound cannot heal until your diabetes is controlled. But we say that wound is a secret in my village. We keep this wound. You go and do sacrifice. They do this. They do that. And that is the same way your forefathers died. That is the same way you want to die. Must you die the same way your forefathers died? The spirit, I'm repeating it, that killed your forefathers are, is ignorant. And it is the same spirit that is going to kill you. It's the same spirit that is going to kill you. HIV. Hmm. Have you heard that HIV, if you have HIV, if you sleep with a virgin, you're cured. If you sleep with a virgin, you're cured. If you sleep with a virgin, you have HIV, you're cured. Have you ever wondered why some of these men are looking for 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old to sleep with, to rape? Most of them have HIV. And there is a culture, there is a saying that if you sleep with HIV positive, uh, if you sleep with a virgin and you have HIV positive, you are cured. What a non nonsense, non nonsensical talk. HIV is a virus. HIV is a virus. HIV is a virus that attacks your defense system. HIV cannot be cured by sleeping, putting your penis in a, a, a virgin's a, a vagina. It's got no link. You cannot be cured of HIV by sleeping with a virgin. It is Taboo, it is, it, is, it, is, it is something that we shouldn't be discussing. So a lot of men that are looking for young girls to rape have HIV. They want to sleep with them to be cured instead of going to the hospital to get antiretroviral drugs. Instead of going to the hospital to get antiretroviral drugs, they are looking for virgins to sleep with to get cured. They cannot get cured. That's not the way HIV is being cured. This is not the way HIV is being cured. HIV is a virus. You need antivirus to help, to cure, to, to treat it. There is no cure yet. So these men are going about looking for young girls to, to rape so that they can get cured of HIV. Some pastors know they have HIV. 
Some prophets know they have HIV. So they look for young, young girls. And you mother, you're carrying your daughter. They go and tell you that they see demon in her. They see demon, I can see. I can see the demon. The demon is on top of her forehead. I can see. I can see the demon. My my sister, you need to leave this girl here for, for a night, two nights of cleansing. We, you need to leave her for... The pastor has HIV. He wants your daughter to rape so that he can be cured of HIV. Finish. I have said it and this is true. The pastor has HIV. That prophet has HIV. He's looking for your daughter to rape to cure him of his HIV. Don't give him a chance. That is why they can do anything to get those young girls. That is why they do anything to get those young girls. Don't give him a chance. Don't give him a chance. The next one I'm going to be talking about is dementia. How many of us have left our old parents back home, our elderly aunties, because they are beginning to talk? They are talking of things. They are telling you they saw this. I am the one that did this. Are you the one that killed Mr. O? Yeah, I'm the one that killed Mr. O. Are you the one that killed Ikechuku? I am the one that killed Ikechuku. Didn't you know? I kill all of them. I kill all of them. She's got dementia. She has lost her memory. Any words you push into her, she's going to answer you yes. The whole village will gather and clap hand. Let her be an old poor woman. Let her be a, a barren woman. Let her not have money. That is a qualification. She is a witch. So she is the one that ate everybody in this village. She is the one that ate everybody in this village. She is the witch. Do you not see how she wanders at night? Dementia patients wander at night. Dementia Dementia patients have the, the that that symptoms of wandering at night. Dementia patients have that symptom of hallucinating. They see things visually. They see things auditory. They see things that you don't see. They forget the things around them. They even forget their family. They see things. They see dead things. And they are going to be seeing the life, the things that they have experienced in life. They are going to be seeing things that is common around you. So in that village, if they are always talking about death, she's going to begin to be talking about death. I'm the one that killed. I'm the one that did. I'm the one that killed this person. I am the one. And, and everybody abandons her. Everybody abandons her. And she does what suffers and dies. Everybody abandons this woman because we have been brought up to believe that she's confessing. She's a witch, but she has got dementia. So anything in Africa that wasn't explained, wasn't quite understandable, they put it down to spirits. They put it down to spirit. They put it down to witchcraft. Everything in Africa that wasn't well explained, they couldn't understand it. They put it down to witchcrafty. So those old women that we used to beat, people would actually beat them up. They only had dementia. They were ill. They were ill. They were not, they were not, they were not witches. They were ill. These women are not witches. They were ill. We need to begin to be human. We need to begin to seek knowledge. That's why I put in my post. It says, knock, seek, and do what? What does the Bible say? You, 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 you ask, you knock, and you seek. Matthew 7, 7. You ask, you knock, and you seek. If you ask, you no know, answer, come. Begin to, to, to knock. If you knock, no answer, come. Begin to seek knowledge. You need this knowledge to survive so that you don't die the way that your forefathers died, like chickens. People have died like chickens. So an elderly woman, your parents, you need this because it's important, suddenly becomes acutely confused. Who knows? You have left her in the village. She doesn't drink. She doesn't eat. She is acutely confused. Maybe out of that dehydration, she's dehydrated. She has not been to the toilet, she's constipated, or she has got what they call urine infection. So if your mother has urine infection, she becomes acutely confused. She begins to see things. 
I had a patient, even as at yesterday, that the family brought. She's saying things. She saw young boys in her garden sat and drinking beer. And she's afraid. These young boys, they are there. They are drinking beer. And the family said, there's nothing like that. The woman had urine infection. She is just seeing things. They begin to see, oh, I want to go. I can see my mother. I can see my mother. And you take the woman to the prayer house when she needs antibiotics. And within two days, three days, your mother dies. You're going to die the same way if you don't seek knowledge to know why your mother died. So many women are dying every day. So many of our parents are dying. We are in town. They call you. She's in the prayer house. She's talking home. She's talking everything. And all you say, send money. You send money. Have you found out? Seek to ask what happened. How did it happen? I know we are not all medical, but we need knowledge. You don't allow your parents to die when you have knowledge. If your mother has high blood pressure and she begins to say, who is after me or who is after me? You have to go and sit down and educate your mother and say, this is just blood pressure, mother. Mama, you just need to take this tablet one every day. It will help you. Don't encourage her to believe because this is the belief that has been trans inherited from generation to generation. And we are dying with the same problem every time. Somebody is dying of stroke. Somebody is dying of diabetes. Somebody is dying of epilepsy because nobody wants to see. What really is this epilepsy? Is it really contagious? Have you got a family member who has it? What can I do? We are just following. It is a, uh, they say it's this, uh, everybody says this. So everybody is following like that. Hey, that woman is talking. Hey, she has died. Oh, my mother, she just walked into the hospital. Nothing, nothing. She died. And that is how we are just dying. And we also are going to begin to die the same way. They tell you that family, everybody dies before the age of 30. Oh, young people die, they don't marry oh, that family. People are dying. Young people are dying. Do you know that they have a heart condition? Do you know they have a heart condition? Nobody cares to know. They don't do any tests. So they have cardiac arrest and die. They die, cardiac arrest and die. Look at Kanu Wankwo. Kanu Wankwo had a heart condition. Because he was in Europe, that is why he was alive. If he was in his village, who would have known that Kanu Wankwo had a heart condition? So the family that have a heart condition that is running in the family, everybody's going to die. And they say, don't marry in that family. There's a spirit there. A demon in that family is killing people. Don't go there. You don't see the young people in that family are dying. They just die like that. They collapse before the age of 50. And then you start becoming anxious. Oh, I'm getting, eh, I'm getting to towards 50. Oh, I'm, eh, I don't want to die. Oh, there's a spirit in my family. Everybody's dying. You are jumping up and down. And then you die. Because you have not sat down to ask, what really killed my brother? What really killed my mother? I want to know, how did she die? You ask questions. The questions will open your eyes. Who? Why? When? What? What killed my mother? They will blame it on people. What killed my father? Why, why did my father scream and die? You go to the, you ask questions. You, you go on the internet. That is why I put it that do not allow what killed your forefathers to kill you. There is information now everywhere. You google it. People put in confusion, causes. You put in confusion, causes. It will bring out causes. You begin to read about them. You begin to find out things. Nobody cares whether you just died. He died. Go on Facebook. Ob obituary everywhere. My mother just died. My father, there's nothing happened to my mother. She died. Because everything is spiritual. Everything is, is linked to something. Everything is linked to one God. Everything is linked to one tradition. But these things are explainable. These things are explainable. They are medical things that are explainable. Do you guys know that in Abuja, they are still killing twins. Do you know that? That there is still killing of twins as we speak in Abuja. They are still killing twins. I'm going to tell you which village it is. They are still killing twins in Abuja as we speak. Do you guys know that? They are still killing twins. That, yeah, 
are still killing twins in 2018 in Nigeria? Because they are they say that they are they are they are they bring bad luck to the community. This community is called Kaida in Gwagwalada community. Kaida in Gwagwalada. It is in the outskirts of Abuja. It's in the outskirts of Abuja. Of, of Abuja. It's called Kaida in Gwagwalada. They are still killing people. There's a community called Busa Kuma. Basa Kuma in Abuja, FCT. They are still killing twins. As we speak. And we are comfortable. There's a woman who gave her story. She had three sets of twins. They killed all of them. She had the first set of twins. They killed her. They killed them. She had the second set of twins. They killed them. Please Google it. You're going to see it. I'm not lying. Google it now as we are here. Google killing of twins in Abuja. You're going to see the village. You're even going to see the woman. Because there are missionaries there trying to help. But this, nobody talks about it. They are still killing twins. And a nature is building a dome in Abuja. Meanwhile, his neighbors are kill, they are killing twins. They are killing twins in Abuja. They are killing children. This woman said she had the first set of twins. They killed them. They poisoned them. They poisoned them. Or they put something over their head and suffocate them. I am sure, blessing, they are killing twins in Abuja. They are killing twins. Go and Google it. There are people walking there. You can take a trip and go there. The village is called Basakuma. And everybody is quiet. Nobody wants to talk about it. The people in the village, yeah, Kaida, thank you. The people in the village, if you go there, they don't want to talk about it. But there are people who have escaped from the village who are talking that they are killing twins in that village. How can they be killing twins in 2018? How can they be killing children? They have a home where these missionaries with his wife have opened and they've had they have more than 120 children there they have more than 120 children from those villages i'm not lying go and google it Journal, journalists have been there they've done investigations the government presence is not there people are dying in that village children are dying children are dying in that village nobody talks that is a tradition. That is what we, all of us, have to say no to. I will not die the same way as my forefathers. So somebody has a dog bite in the village, maybe mostly in Yoruba land. What do they do? <laughs> they, boil, they do pap, very thick pap. They rub it on the dog bite and they give it to the dog to, to eat. They say if the dog eats it, I'm fine. But they now develop tetanus. A rabies, sorry, and they die, or the wound itself develops tetanus and they still die. And up to today, 2018, people are still dying that same way. People are still dying of rabies, people are still dying of tetanus because of the meat we have been fed with. Because of the meat we have been fed with, that if you rub the pap, thick pap, on the wound and give it to uh, the dog that to, to lick or to eat, that wound is healed. So people do it. You have not asked yourself, but this is a wound. This is a dog bite. I need antibiotics. And people die of dog bite. If you know what people are dying of in Africa, you will cry. When I hear what people are dying of, I'll cry. A man went home and found his father in the hospital confused. And they have been going to places praying, praying, praying. Daddy is confused. Daddy is confused. And daddy is confused. And the man went to, what is wrong with daddy? The good thing is that this man was a support worker in a hospital here. So the man knows a little bit of health. The man said, is this confusion? And this is what I see when people have what a urine infection now. Have they checked daddy's urine? They now say, hey, we don't know. They rush him to the hospital. The doctor said, please, can you check the urine? They send the urine to the lab. And the man had urine infection. And the man said, as soon as they gave my father antibiotics, he got better. How many of
of us know that when you have infection, if you don't treat it with antibiotics, you're going to develop sepsis and you're going to die. That is why our parents are dying. They develop sepsis, full-blown infection into the blood and they die because nobody knows. They were talking, talking, confused because they had water infection. Nobody gave them antibiotics. Then they develop full-fledged sepsis and they die. That is why our parents are dying. And if we don't know these things, this is the way we also die. It is no spirit killing us in our families. It is ignorance killing us. It's ignorance, ignorance that is killing us in our families. In your village, I've mentioned so many things. Now, somebody has hernia, 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 yeah. There is a culture of silence. No, I can't tell anybody you. Ah, this hernia, I can't tell anybody you. If I say I have hernia, ah, no. If I have hernia, I can't tell anybody. So they carry this heavy load about. They carry hernia about. They carry it about <laughs> until the hernia. What is hernia? It is just a protrusion through your abdomen because of weakness. So the intestines protrude. They come out like a sack. That is what you see there hanging. And what you need to do is when that thing hangs and hangs, one day it's going to be, be obstructed. When you get obstructed hernia, is the person is going to die. The person is going to die. No two ways about it. So she's he's carrying it about. Family don't know. Wife don't know. If it is a wife, husband don't know. Children don't know. And then suddenly the stomach is big. Hey, they say big stomach. Oh, it's because of uh, uh, he has offended the gods. They have to go and appease the gods. The stomach is growing big. He's screaming. My tummy, my tummy. Because he's got obstruction. He needs hospital. They go and open up and relieve the obstruction. Oh, your father is screaming in pain. You call pastor. They are pouring him oil. They pour him water. They pour him ororo. They pour everything. Mantle. You carry it. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. You speak nonsense. Your father is dying. Your father needs a surgery to open up and relieve the obstruction. But no, we are so brainwashed. We are so traditionalist spirit spiritual but we are in the physical but we are all living in the we are living in in space in africa all of us are living in space nobody thinks that is living physical and that this physical body can be sick everything is spiritual now we are in space all of us are spiritual we are all demons probably we are all spirit being we fly nobody thinks anything is is normal Everything has connection. Everything is my father, my grandmother, my, my auntie. Everything has explanation. Sister Chinwe mentioned migraine. A woman has migraine. Is it a migraine? I don't know. But let me tell you something. There is something called of arachnoid hemorrhage, a bleed in the brain. What happens to these people? They tell you that I felt something slap me. I felt like somebody used a cup or a big spoon, a big stick to beat me. And as soon as they beat me in the head, the person collapsed. And we hear things like, she screamed and then she collapsed. She screamed and collapsed. That is significant. That is classical. And what that means, that the person has a bleed, a sudden burst of a blood vessel and then the person has bled and the person has collapsed the person died we will put it to somebody auntie mother-in-law we will blame everybody we will blame everybody around this woman has suffered all her life now that the children are growing somebody wants to come and kill them now that the person is gay somebody wants to kill her look at this woman she has suffered all her life now she was just washing plate somebody they hear something slapped her and she died she probably had high blood pressure didn't treat it the blood vessels got so tense, the burst, and she had a bleed in the brain, and she died. But we put it all to spirits. We put it all to somebody doing us. Somebody is always doing us. Somebody, some way, is always the cause of our problem. 
A woman cannot have children. They say because the mother didn't have children. The grandmother didn't have children. There's something in that family. No. Have, did the grandmother go for any medical investigation? No. Did the grandfather go for, did the mother go for any medical investigation? No. So this woman will not go. So what kill your, your grandmother, kill your mother is going to kill you. And that thing is ignorance. The demon you're fighting, the demon you're going to sh to shine chill or to fight, the demon you're going to redeem calm to fight, the demon you're going to do hundred days fasting to fight is ignorant. I G N O R A N C E. That is what you're fighting. And what you need is knowledge. What you need is knowledge to know what to do with your life. That is what we need. So we have mentioned so many things. I don't know, so many other things. You have migraine. You are still going to pray. Your blood pressure is high. You're still going to pray like the one they pray in MFM. How can you not collapse and die? Why will you not collapse and die? Your blood pressure is 200. You're still going to pray. Somebody called me from one mountain. She said she went to. Oh, doctor, do you know my blood pressure is so high? Eh, I'm in this mountain. We have seven days prayer. I said, you better go come down no? from that mountain. You better come down and come and find medication. You better come down from that mountain or they are going to bring your corpse down. If your blood pressure is over 200, I don't know what you're doing on mountain. No? You better come down. And this is the message we are giving. This is the message we are giving out. If you are you checking your blood pressure? Are you checking maybe in a family? Diabetes runs in your family. Everybody is dying of diabetes. Must you die of diabetes? Must you die of diabetes? Diabetic is inherited. If your mother has type 1 diabetes, you can have type 1 diabetes. It is inherited. And there's nothing you can do about it. I've seen six-year-old children have diabetes because it's inherited. I've seen young people in the whole family, all of them are diabetes, be diabetic because it's inherited. So why are you refusing medication? You want to die the same way your great-grandparents died because all of them were diabetic. It runs in the family. There's a genetic link. So probably your great-grandfather died of diabetes High sugar killed him. Your grandfather died of diabetes. High sugar killed him. Your father died of diabetes. High sugar killed him. Along with complications, you want to die the same way. You want to go the same way. Because that family, there is a demon. So you are looking for the demon. That is why you are being scammed. That is why they are taking your money. Because you are looking for the demon, but there is no demon here. You need medication. You need medication. Somebody has wound or somebody has kidney. She has gone to be taking herbs. All you women, because they bring this one today, you are taking they bring uh, this one today. You're taking. Hey, this one is good. Oh, he will not protect you. He will, you take. You're killing your kidney. Then your kidney packs up. You're running from pillar to post. Your kidney, when it packs up, you're going to die. Kidney is important organ in the body. You're going to die. So you either take medication or you begin to write your will and buy your coffin. That is simple. People say I'm not sensitive. I am truthful and sincere. Every January, thank you, Steve. You go and be doing dry fasting. You are not drinking water. Your kidney, your body needs water. You are doing dry fasting, pursuing demon that is not there. You are pursuing your ignorance. And then you get kidney failure on top of your fasting. And then you die for God's sake. Do you deserve to die this way? Do you, do you really think that God wants you to die this way? Do you really think that the God that created you wants you to die this way? We need to seek knowledge. 
We need to seek knowledge to save our life and that of your family. The day my mother is diabetic, diabetic, the day she called me and said, hey, the pharmacy man changed my medication, I was mad. Nobody should change your medication like that. Nobody should tell you to stop taking your medication. Nobody. I'm going to arrest that man. Tell him. He said, oh, no, please, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take it. You have to be in charge. Now that you're grown, you have to be responsible for your parents so that they will not die the way your forefathers died. You have to be responsible. Whether you're living in town, you're living abroad, you need to know what medication your parents are taking. I know somebody whose father had a problem and, they, and he was supposed to be given steroids. The pharmacist made error and gave the father water tablet to take. And this man said, oh, daddy, I've collected medication. That's fine, be taking it. The father was taking water tablets. He took water tablets for two weeks. He was peeing every goddamn water out of his body. And the father had complete shutdown of his organs. And the father, before he went down, this is a doctor, before he went down to see the father, and he knew what was happening, that there was a medication error. The father died that night. The father died that night. We have to be responsible and not die the same way as our forefathers died. We have to be responsible and not allow our parents to die the same way that their own parents died. If your father has osteoarthritis, I don't know how they call it in Ipo or Yoruba. Osteoarthritis, they cannot walk. They have knee problem, knee pain. They cannot walk. It's not the time to take them to prayer house. It's the time to give them pain management. Physiotherapy, if you have money, if you don't have, make sure they are taking pain medication. It doesn't change the fact that that thing will go away, but at least it will help. It will help. It will help them. A man was taken to a traditional healer's place because he had osteoarthritis on both knees. He couldn't walk. The family were all around the place looking for what is the cause that my father, how can they just make my father not walk like that? All his neck, he cannot walk. How can they not allow my father to walk? When he stands up, his knees are very painful. I said, that place you took him to cannot help him. He's going to die in that place. Because they, what they would do is to give him herbs. Every day herbs. Every day herbs. Every day herbs. And the herbs are going to kill his kidneys. And his kidneys is going to die. So the next minute you hear, you hear that what? The, kid, the man died. They tell you, come and take the corpse. You go and bury him. And that's your father gone. The next chapter is you. The next chapter is you. If you know you're diabetic, you're hypertensive, you're frail, your elderly mother, make sure she's not going to do any nonsense fasting. Make sure that your elderly parents are not going to do any nonsense she love fasting. Nonsense redeem camp fasting. They are going to die. People are dying. Nobody talks about it. Let's be truthful to ourselves. Let them drink. Let them eat. And stop being... Let us stop this madness. You have to be in charge of them. You have to tell them, this is what you need to do or you kill yourself. We are silent, quiet. We don't want to talk. Silence is killing us. Let's begin to open up. Let's begin to share our problem. Let's begin to open up. Somebody said back pain here. Back pain. Somebody had gallstones or ulcer. Let's talk ulcer because ulcer is even leading the, so many things to talk about. Ulcer. Young people have ulcer. Every time you have pain at the top of your tummy. Every time you have pain at the top of your tummy. They say it is your witchcraft. 
they say they put a knife they say so i can see a saw <laughs> i can see a saw there is a saw coming down into your stomach somebody spiritual saw there is no spiritual saw you have ulcer because of too much fasting you are you have ulcer ulcer is wound on your stomach wall you have ulcer is no spiritual law is no spiritual law you have ulcer you need treatment when you treat it it is gone yabeji said something about pregnant women fasting what are you fasting for can you not pray to your god god knows your situation you are killing yourself you are killing the baby because we are pursuing you are pursuing things that are not there you are pursuing things everywhere these things are killing us and I'm saddened in my spirit. Every day you hear phone call. Every day you open. People are dying. 53 dead. 50 dead. 30 dead. 52. Now even if somebody reach 50, they will celebrate. The person is old. Is old. Ah, ah. Must we die like this? Must we allow the things that are kill our forefathers to kill us? We don't. We need to talk to ourselves. Go and check Facebook. 50. They say, your brother, he has died. Your uncle, he died. Everybody is dying. Because everybody is pursuing something. And that something is ignorance. That is what we are pursuing in Africa. Ignorance. That's what we are pursuing. Daniel Adiogun, back pain for old people. If you have an old parent who has back pain, beware. That could be prostate cancer. Beware, be very, very careful. That back pain could be prostate cancer. They have back pain, very, very common. Old people with back pain, that could be prostate cancer. If your elderly, elderly parents have back pain, a man, a man, a male elderly man has back pain, take the man straight to go and check the prostate. Because that is a sign the person might have prostate cancer. I have seen women with breast cancer. When it starts, they go and do what? Incise. They want to incise and remove pus. Breast cancer is not pus now. It is cancer. When you open it, it's going to spread. You're going to die. When you open a lump in the breast, it, 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 you're going to die. We need to talk to ourselves. We need to get knowledge. Yeah, thank you, Ezine. Because when they begin to have back pain, that means the cancer has spread to the spine. We need to talk to ourselves. So many things, we, we are just, we walk past it, we believe it, we, hey, this one has that, that's it. Life expectancy in Nigeria right now, do you know it's 53? If you're 50, be warned because you're going to die. And what is killing us is the same thing that killed our forefathers. How can we allow sickle cell to kill? I know it's, it, it's killing, but a child with sickle cell just dying because they say it's a banjo, it's a biku? No. We have to talk to ourselves. We have to tell ourselves the truth. Some people go to Shiloh, they say the, the genotype was SS, now it's AA. They start shouting. They start shouting. They've changed it though, it was AS and SS, now it is AA. Hey, look at, we went to the clinic, Shiloh Clinic, oh, they changed it, it's AA. The same child, the same young girl, now died few days, few months after. Because she stopped doing everything. Because you've told that girl that they have changed it to. It's no more SS. It's now AA. She dies. She dies. If she dies, if she died with herself. We are dying of ignorance. We are allowing people to manipulate us, to kill us, kill our parents, kill our children. We, it has to stop. Please help me share this video. Help me share it, please. We need to save people's lives. It's nothing to do with me. I should have been sleeping now.
but it's something to do with all of us. We have to save somebody's life out there. We need to save somebody's life out there. So all of you hit that share button and send it to somebody. That something that happened to you, happened to your forefather, should not kill you. It should not kill you. There's no reason why it should kill you. There's no reason why you should die of malaria. There's no reason why you should die of diarrhea. There's no reason why you should die just like a chicken. Please, my people, open your eyes. If a child has autism, I'm not going to talk about autism today because my team said autism is a university level. We should be talking primary school and secondary school level. Autism, that child has complex problem, complex brain development, developmental problem. The child cannot talk. The child behaves in a funny way. The child is nodding head. The child is nodding head all the time. He has a pattern. He has a way he does things. You say the child is possessed. They say the child is a witch. They don't take the child out of the house. People leave them at home. They say that child is a strange child. The child has autism. Autism. That needs you to understand what is autism and begin to find out how do I manage my child. How do I manage my child. Those people prophesying to you, some of them have never got a paper like this. They've never gone to school. No paper, no certificate. You with all your certificates, you cannot sit down and find out what is wrong with you. You cannot sit down and find out what is, up, what is wrong with your mother, what is wrong with your father. Ask questions. Take her yourself to the hospital. Find out what the problem is. You can don't allow what killed your forefathers to kill you. If you're a woman, let me tell you this, and you're over 45, 40, let me say 40, going to 50, 55, you begin to have changes in your body. Nobody is after you. You begin to be hot all the time as if you should remove your clothes and walk naked. Nobody is after you. You have menopausal symptoms. If you need estrogen, if it's really disturbing you, go and sit with the gynecologist and discuss how do I manage my symptoms. Because you submit yourself, you're going to be physically and sexually abused because of normal body physiology. You will go and submit yourself to charlatans. To begin to abuse you because of normal body physiology. Who bewitched us? Who bewitched us? Ignorance. Ignorance is the spirit that we are fighting. And today, my message is, let us get knowledge. From all what we are saying, let us get knowledge. So that we will not die the same way. Our forefathers died. At least let us fulfill purpose. At least let us let us die and say, okay, they tried everything, she still died. That's good enough. Or she died in an accident. That's good enough. But not things that you can prevent. Favor says, Doc, is there possibility that someone who's SS can automatically change to AA? It's like telling me that me that my skin is brown, I can automatically be, be become a white man. That me, like this, that I'm black Nigerian, that I will automatically change to British, white. That is what I'm, what is the explanation. I'm not saying there's nothing God cannot do. If God does it, you will see that God did it. If God did it, healed you from SS, you become AA. Every hospital in the world you will go, your result will show AA. But don't let anybody lie to you and use you for business. And propagate business and say he was SS. Our clinic, it is the church clinic that gave you paper and say you are AA. It's a lie, yo. Go, if it is God that healed you, go to all the hospital. Leave your town, go to another place and check. If your result is still come out AA, then you are sure that it is God that healed you. 
Don't let any Igilla come and go to his clinic and tear paper and say to you, Hey, hey this is a uh, AA. You were SS. Now you're AA. You shout hallelujah. Shallow mind. You go home. No medication. Nothing. And then you die. So the answer is, if I am black Nigerian, it is a very, very rare occurrence for me to become a British white skin. Genotype is, is what you are born with. It's in your gene. No medication can change it. No medication, me, medication can change it. So if God has healed you, go and check. If God has healed you, uh -huh, it is not going to be a hidden thing. God has healed you. God has healed you. Everyone will know that God has healed you. Everybody. Clinics, hospital, doctors. If God heals somebody of cancer, all the hospital doctors will be amazed. Oh, we cannot see anything anymore. Oh, there's nothing here. Were you sure that you go and go and go? They keep telling you it is gone. Common sense. Common sense. Let us not leave our brain. Thank you so much. I've spoken for one hour. That is enough for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Please share, share, share. We need to save ourselves. We need to keep talking and save ourselves. We need to save ourselves from all this madness. The thing that is killing us is ignorance. Let us seek knowledge. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. Knock. And seek. God bless you all. Thank you so much, everyone. We are one family and I appreciate all of you. All of you, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please share, 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 share. Keep sharing till somebody somewhere gets this message. This message is for somebody. I know that I can feel it in the spirit. You know, the Lord says somebody here will receive a miracle. <laughs> so good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.